Hey everybody, Shane here from Cine Samples. I'm really excited to show you our brand new artist series library, Apocalyptica. Let's check it out. So for those of you who don't know, Apocalyptica is this amazing metal band out of Finland that's based solely on cello sounds. Distorted, huge, amped up, affected, post-rock, crazy in-your-face metal, hair band, out of this world, cellos. And um, they kind of play both sides of the fence though. They have amazing in your face, uh, kind of shreddy sounds. And they also have very, very beautiful, intimate cello sounds that they employ. Uh, them along with the drummer forms the band Apocalyptica. It's about four people. So three cellos and a drummer. It's a massive sound. It's absolutely unbelievable. And we've been wanting to work with them for a long time. And we finally got this product through the pipeline. It sounds amazing. We're super excited to get into it and to show you all what it sounds like. So here we go. Uh, I'm just gonna walk you through basically everything we built into the library. It's a very simple, straightforward, plug and play kind of a library, but I want to show you all the details to make sure that everybody knows how to use it. So let's start with our basic rhythm patch. At a glance, um, you have this top bar that has all of your controls on it, a mapping section where you can select your different articulations and set up your key switches, a sequencer for playing sequences very easily, um, solo buttons and a legato button in, in a different patch that just allows a couple of different settings for short articulations and long articulations, um, our amplifier and cabinet, our effects, and then a mic and DI sample, um, sample set switch. Really, really simple. Um, other than that, the only thing on the interface is the um, display of what currently loaded articulation is up. So let's just jump into it. Here is our mapping section. Um, here are all of the articulations you have. It's a bunch of really great stuff, plus a whole suite of effects. Um, right now it acts as a switchboard. So whatever you click, that's what's loaded up. And if you want to set up key switches for better performance, you can just click on the key switch button. And then you'll see down here at C0, as I add to it, they just populate key switches up the, up the key range. But let's actually hear this thing, right? So check this out. Stockatissimos, some regular sustains. In our solo patch, we have two different kinds of legato, both mellow and aggressive. So this is just basic for rhythm sustains. Uh, but we do have a very well, uh, well recorded and beautiful sounding legato for both aggressive and mellow on the solo side. So don't worry about that. Uh, we got some power chords in the rhythm section though that are really awesome. Check this out. Also tenudos. And staccatos. You can't get the sound of power chords without actually recording them. You can always play a couple notes at the same time and squeak by, but these have really, really good low end energy and all those delicious harmonics that you're hearing from the amp and everything are just too good to be true. Uh, we also got some pizzicatos, both choked off and resonant. And uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, and Solpants. Sol the Solpanta cellos are amazing. Check this out. All up near the bridge, just beautifully ugly in all the right ways. So that's that. Um, key switches make it easy to make a performance patch to your liking. It's very straightforward, very simple. Um, and that's what the whole you know vibe of this library is. Just plug it in, play, get a great sound. Uh, with that in mind, let's throw up some stockatissimos and get over to the sequencer. Now you'll notice when I put on these stockatissimos, the solo button appears. For the longer sustained articulations, it's not available because the function of this solo button is even though it's a short note for the staccato or the stockatissimo, you still get a little bit of carryover. You know, the cello still resonates. But if you're trying to play really fast kind of lead lines or just fast rhythmic lines and patterns, it's good to have some cutoff on the first note. 
So if this solo button is activated and you play two notes in quick repetition, it will cut off the first note and play the second note. So let me play a little uh, quick line and then we'll show you the difference. Now a solo activated. Now with it act not activated. Just a little bit messy because we're dealing with samples, but with that solo button, it just cuts off that sample naturally as if that finger is cutting it off and playing the next note. So it's a great little feature for the short ones, uh, for the short articulations. I usually have it on when I'm playing quick lines with this kind of library. Uh, for the sequencer, it's a basic sequencer. Turn it on and off here. You got latch, retrigger, and scale by velocity, which allows you to kind of be more dynamic once you draw something in to play soft and play loud, and it will trigger it back um, kind of uh, in relation to how how hard you're pressing your keys. Uh, we've got a random button here so that you can try out different patterns and get fun stuff. Uh, this up and down button over here basically says if I've got uh, a, a D minor chord. <laughs> It's going to go up and down the, the key rather than down and up and vice versa. straightforward but really awesome sound in the sequencer uh, other than that we've got steps you can control how much is in your sequencer and um, what steps mean 16th note eighth note chord note etc and then over here on the left we have this fun little thing where you can choose your root and then a corresponding scale and it will force your notes no matter what you play into that scale which for younger composers and people like me who might not know how to write for the Locrian scale or you know an octet or a, let's say I, I want everything in um, um, uh, in Locrian with a sharp nine. I don't know. Uh, great. And I want that in the key of D. I can just go on the keyboard. <laughs> press random notes and get something that's actually going to sound good and not rely on my bad musical theory. So make sure you check that out. It's a really, really cool uh, little, little feature. But right now, root C and chromatic is home base. Everything plays normal. Okay, let's go on to our amps and effects. So right now we have amps and cabinets default loaded, and um, we've got a bunch of options. Drive, heavy, and lead, uh, with a bunch of different options. You can feel free to tweak your heart out there, um, along with cabinets 412, 212, with different um, speaker options. But for me, I don't wanna spend a ton of time tweaking, I just wanna play and have a good sound. And to that end, we've included a bunch of snapshots here. Um, we have an acoustic setting that just has, you know, this cello, the cellos that they recorded sounded beautiful. So check this out. Let's get a sustain here. And then we have other options for 212 and 412. And I'll do something like, I don't know, a clean is as clean as you can get with an amp. And then we have um, a lot sharper and more bright cutting through the mix lead kind of a sound. So that's pretty much it for the um, snapshots. It's just to give you some options that are quick start, make everyone's life a little bit easier. And now onto the effects, very, very basic, compressor, chorus, and reverb. What would Apocalyptica be without some effects? You know, we got a bunch of nice reverb, a bunch of great chorus in there, and a compressor, and obviously you're gonna have, let's do some soul pop. So get crazy with it, it's fun, um, but mostly we're gonna have we're, mostly I'm going to rely on my DAW effects or any of my third party plugins to really make something crazy, but we wanted to have some good, uh, some color in there. So other than that, we have a mic and a DI switch. So essentially what we did was when we recorded these cellos, we provided two different input options. One was a U87, a Neumann U87, the best mic on the planet, and we stuck it in front of the cello and it sounds great. It's just a good mic'd cello sound and you can't go wrong. Uh, it's simple, it's, it's difficult to mess up mixing that. But with this kind of processing power, you heard with some of the amps and 
and cabinets and some of the effects, it can get out of hand pretty quick. With the mic, you're capturing so much of the room and you're capturing so many harmonics and all these extra different, you know, lush, warm colors that it can be a little bit much for all of the effects to be paired along with that big sound. The DI is literally a plugged in electric cello DI sound. So it's like an internal microphone in the instrument itself and it's just a lot thinner, it's a lot more direct, it's a lot more controlled basically. And um, this is for not only running through crazy effects in contact and in your DAW, but also if you're trying to reamp these sounds, uh, my favorite thing is to use a plugin called, like from Neural DSP, the Fort and Cali Suite or the Abbasi um, signature stuff or the R Rabia Assad presets. Uh, they're, they just sound incredible. So if you have all that stuff, if you're already kind of a guitar player like I am, obviously, and you have all these IRs and different amps and cabs set, set up for digital recording, the DI is your way to go. It's gonna get you a lot cleaner and more um, controllable sound. So that's pretty much it for the uh, rhythm patch. Let's jump over to the solo patch. Now, the functions essentially are the same. Uh, the differences are, the two main differences, or actually the two only differences, are the set of articulations. So in the solo patch, we have a set of aggressive articulations and a set of mellow articulations. Um, they're essentially the same, except for for aggressive, we have slides, um, and for the mellow, we don't, but we have legato for both aggressive and mellow. Let's play some of that. wonderful sounding stuff and if you want something more mellow and beautiful because we all know because if you're a huge fan of Apocalyptica like we are they start out nice and they get really mean but that nice part of their music and that really beautiful uh, kind of intro section stuff is really important to capture so um, we got a mellow legato along with this beautiful acoustic setting that's essentially just the U87 in front of the um, in front of the cello with some good reverb <laughs> Awesome stuff. So as you can see, this library is very diverse. You can really get into it and just start grinding your teeth on the stuff, or you can add it as a regular solo cello. It's a beautiful, beautifully recorded cello, and we really like it. So there's that. Um, in uh, you know, in relation to the aggressive, which I would throw a lead kind of thing on. <laughs> wonderful so we got a bunch of different options there we got slides little shorter slides and then wonderful tremolos love this library. It's so fun to play. It's super cool. And then obviously just two nudos and sustains. Um, uh, you notice when I put on a short articulation, that solo button still exists there. Um, if you want to play uh, like polyphonic, then you're going to have to take that off. And you'll get power chord sounds with that kind of stuff. The mellow has such a different character in its performance, it's even good to have right along uh, with the distorted kind of sounds that we have included in this library. It's just a totally different approach. So there's a lot of stuff to unpack here, but it essentially um, works the same with the key switches and you can just set up a performance patch that's to your preference. Um, the other thing that you'll notice, the other main difference is when you are in a legato patch specifically, or a legato articulation is loaded, you have a, uh, well loaded and selected I should say, if you have the key switch on and you have both legato, say and staccato selected, that's gonna change based on which uh, articulation you have selected. So if I've got legato, I'm gonna have my legato button here, and when I open that, I'm gonna have my legato controls. I can either set a manual speed here, or I can just have it auto set. I've never taken it off of auto <laughs> other than to test, and um, the auto works great. It should just plug in and play and sound good. But if you have a preference or if you're trying to do a particular 
quick lead line and you just need the speed as, as fast as possible, get in there and make your tweaks. But it's out of the way, you shouldn't have to think about it. So that is Apocalyptica. I uh, hope you guys love the sound and, and love playing with it and creating amazing music with it. If you guys don't follow Apocalyptica yet, please go check out their stuff. They have incredible music. They're incredible people. Um, watch their YouTube videos, buy their albums. You will not be sorry. They're masters at their craft and we're just really feel lucky to have, have a little piece of that sound. Um, for, for us to compose with now. So I hope you guys add this to your templates. I hope you guys start making amazing music and hire them. <laughs> hire them to come play in your albums. Hire them to come play in your orchestras. It really is a super phenomenal and super unique sound. So um, it's available now for sale on cinesamples.com.